But Brandon, let's move on into the next team we got on the docket, and it is the Kansas State Thundercats are on the loose. Thundercats are loose. Do, 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 do. No, it's the Wildcats. I just think your logo looks like the Thundercats, so I call you guys the Thundercats each and every year. But this team, Brandon, coming in 6-3 and three in the conference last season, 9-4. and four. And when I asked you coming into this segment before we hit the record button, I said, hey, Brandon, what do you want to talk about first to kind of start this segment off? And you said you want to talk about the rushing attack, the running backs, for the Thundercats. Well, not even necessarily the running backs, but I, I think that you can... It's funny, as most people who, who watch this regularly would be able to say, mm-hmm. here they go again, because I'm going to move it to the quarterback <laughs> here he because, of how, his own. because of how effective he was, and that's Jesse mm-hmm. Ertz. And Jesse Ertz, was, he was very, very good running the football last mm-hmm. year. He had over 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns on the ground, that's impressive. That's really, really good. Understanding, though, that he's the quarterback, he had less than 2,000 yards, only nine touchdowns, and four interceptions. But they were effective. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were effective. And just imagine if he was even better. So I think that that's, that's something where you have to focus this year. This year, it is focused more on that passing game. This year, it is it's not even necessarily throw the ball more, Mm -hmm. but maybe, I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's maybe just be even more efficient and effective when you do throw it. I know you only throw four interceptions, but that's, that's not necessarily the case. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually throw the football more. I just rescinded my entire comment. They have (laughs) to throw the football more, but, but that's, but that's the thing though, too, because you can't, mm, I don't want to say you can't be effective if you, don't throw the football in this conference, mm-hmm. but it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to win it. If you're where Kansas State was this past year, decent team, nothing wrong with them, but you know they didn't win the conference. They were nine and four. Winner of the confer- conference, Oklahoma, was eleven and two. You were six and three within the conference. It's very good, very good, very mm-hmm. formidable. But to be able to get to where the top dog is and to be a top dog, a top three, you've got to be able to throw the football. You've got to be able to score throwing the football. Mm -hmm. And if you can add on the 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns along with that, that's just a big plus. And I think you're exactly right because I look at the the running game and from last year, if you look at the passing attack, only 10 touchdowns. If you look at the rushing attack, 39 touchdowns. 39 of their, what, 49 touchdowns came on the ground last year. You had 12 from Ertz from the quarterback. You had 12 from um, Demel also, Winston Demel, And then you also six from Alex Barnes. To me, looking at this, I want to see how um, Sillman and Barnes do this year in the run game. And I know that you will they're not the only two that are going to get touches. Demel, who had 12 last year, and then even um, Dalvin Warmack are also going to get touches from the fullback position. I wonder, though, about Alex Barnes and Justin Sillman only because last year Charles Johnson was the starter usually, but he was never the top. He was never the top runner because, I mean, look at it. Jesse Ertz was the top rusher last year. I want to see if this year if Barnes or Silman can kind of take over that top spot to where it's not just you look at the stats at the end of the year and you see your quarterback 500 more rushing yards than your top runner for the year. Also, Jones, yeah, you you might have been the starter last year, but only two touchdowns. I want to see a little bit more out of either Barnes or Silman in the rush attack, but that's actually a question that, I mean, kind of going off of your point, does Jesse Ertz this year need to say, you know what, I'm not going to do as much with my legs, I'm going to try to rely on my arm, or is it Kansas State just goes, you know what, we're we're not going to fix it. We're, it's not broke, we're not going to fix it. Ertz, you do what you do, and if that means you're running it in more than you're throwing it in, we'll take it. Well, I think it's important for him to be able to do what he does, but mm-hmm. at the same time, to my comment earlier, is that's fine and dandy, mm-hmm. but if you're ending up with less than 2,000 yards 
through the air every season, great if you had 12 scores on the ground, Mm -hmm. but you ended fourth in the conference. You didn't win it. So he does need to throw the ball more. He does need to be more effective and efficient when he's throwing it. That's what needs to happen for K-State. They were 5-0 and when they averaged seven yards a pass or more. 5-0. Mm-hmm. and That's what they need to continue to do. Seven yards per pass or more. They need to be able to do that. He's going to have to take some deep shots on the outside, down the field, to guys who are going to be able to catch the football. Mm -hmm. This K-State team has too much talent and is too good to just be, eh, they were good, but they weren't great. They weren't exceptional. They have too much talent to not get to that point. They've got the talent to do it. Ricky, if this running game could take the pressure Mm -hmm. off the quarterback, which it should, and Ertz is going to be doing some of the running, the passing game should come along, and the passing game should start to thrive a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But Ertz, is it's going to be on him. He's going to have to take some more shots. He's going to have to take some more chances. And sometimes that's a little daunting, but he can do it. Well, and kind of the flip things now, talking going offense to defense, the biggest kind of – we haven't talked about anybody that – the Thundercats, Wildcats I know, but Thundercats – need to replace this year. But on the defensive side, they do. They had a big guy. There was one guy that we were talking about NFL draft-wise. He was in some mock drafts of mine, Jordan Willis, who he's going to be the biggest guy that they have to replace, the kind of do-everything star on that defense, on the edge. And this year it'll be interesting because the guy that they're kind of pegging to see if he can fill that void is a – a freshman from last year, sophomore now, Reggie Walker, who um, recorded 39 tackles last year, six and a half sacks. That to me is the offense has all the t- has all the tools. Defensively, I know it's a unit game. There's a lot more than just one player, but in college football, in football in general, if you have that guy on the outside that can make havoc and cause havoc. On an opposing quarterback, like there's a reason why before we started doing our previews and when we talked about LSU, that Arden Key was the guy that we're focusing on coming into this year. Because whether it's outside linebacker or on the line on the edge, he can cause havoc for quarterbacks. That to me, though, for Kansas State, can Reggie Walker in his second year fill the shoes of a guy like Jordan Willis, who's now playing football with the Cincinnati Bengals? Yeah, I think that that's going to be important is having having the guys come in and step up to the positions that were filled by guys last year had guys in place that were very, very good, clearly, because mm-hmm. as you mentioned, a couple of them moved on to the NFL. Mm-hmm. And defense is very, very, very key, especially when you look at the fact that here's a couple of things. They gave up 457 yards to Oklahoma State and allowed Mason Rudolph to complete 76% of his passes and 12 yards per pass. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma gave up 372 yards. Baker Mayfield hit 81% of his throws. And again, close to 12 yards per pass. And then West Virginia, that wasn't so much uh, of of a... big deal but then you have Stanford didn't do anything crazy but 15 of 19 via the pass Mm -hmm. they need to step up a little bit more and these these better teams they need to be able to have some stops Mason Rudolph can't be completing 76 percent of his throws Baker Mayfield certainly can't be completing 81 percent of his throws that's that's the difference between a team that's going to win and a team that's going to be in the middle of the pack fighting to get out of it. Well, and that's is who a, can play is who can play enough defense. Mm-hmm. And you always have to preface it by saying it's the Big Twelve. So saying enough defense is like playing good defense. Well, and whoever can do that is going to rise above. Well, and that's the thing coming into this year. 
the side of the ball that I'm more worried about, if I have to pick a side that I'm worried about for the Wildcats, it's the defensive oh, side. Hands down. They have tons of experience, tons of firepower on that offensive side. The offensive side is kind of like, I'm, I'm trying to think here, let's say you have, I'll just say it's a football team. You have that one player where it's like, I'll just send him out there. I don't have to fucking worry about him because I know he's going to do a good job. That's the entire offense to me. The offense is just send them out there. They know what they're doing. They have the experience. They have the firepower. The defense, though, there are some players where it's like, okay, how are you going to step up? Like I, the um, Willis, the hole is the one I focused on. But you you mentioned it. Them against the pass, that's going to be the biggest question mark. And the thing I look at is you mentioned their names, Baker Mayfield. Like these are the teams and quarterbacks that depending on how they go do against the pass, will depend how the Wildcats do this year. Baker Mayfield in Oklahoma, Mason Rudolph and Oklahoma State. We talked about Nick Simonak last, last week with Texas Tech. I'll throw him in there. And then I'm going to sh- throw Shane Bouchelle in there with Texas. Those are the four games that I look at. And you can kind of give an honorable mention to Kenny Hill, who we talked about with TCU, only because... We don't know if he's going to improve this year, but those four teams that I mentioned, if they can do well against the pass, oh, and I forgot, I'm going to add an extra team, West Virginia, because they we're going to get into them next, but they got the news that the uh, transfer from Florida, Will Greer, he is cleared to play. He's ready for the opener. So that's another player. So you have West Virginia, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Texas, and maybe Texas A&M. Those teams, it's like, you know what? If those quarterbacks come up and beat you, I don't know if your offense is going to do enough to stay with them. However, this Kansas State team, if they're on their good day and the defense is clicking and with the offense they have, they on a 100% A A game, A day, they are the best choice to dethrone Oklahoma. But all the chips, all the suns, all the planets, whatever you want to say— have to align for that to happen. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. And they, they, they do. They, they do have to happen. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just tough to see another team being able to take over Oklahoma. But mm-hmm. I think, I think you're right. This, this team has the consistency offensively, and and defensively. If they can come up with some bigger stops, they also could have have the pieces there, and they could have things set up in place there. But it, but it will take a, I won't even say a near-perfect season, mm-hmm. but things are going to have to go pretty right for Kansas. But if you take a look at their schedule, they, it's they, kind they, of they, favorable. they start off, their, I think their first three games, Central Arkansas, Charlotte, and Vandy, I think those are three wins. I'd add one more. I'd go 4-0. Oh. Would you put Baylor in there yeah. as another win? I don't I, think I thought they, about it, but I... I think this is going to be a rebuild year for Baylor. I think we know that, but... Yeah. It doesn't mean that Baylor's not going to win any games, yeah, and not you saying, never know. I'm, uh, I'm not going to give them a win against the Thundercats. But 4-0 for sure. Mm-hmm. On the road at Texas. See, this is one of the tough be, ones. Could be a, a tough game. You've mm-hmm. got Shane Bouchelle down there. You've got a new team mm-hmm. under Tom Herman that's trying to get a new have a new energy breathed into mm-hmm. them and a new life breathed into them. So they're going to be a team that's... That's they're certainly on the rise. There, there are four games I look at as possible losses, just to kind of make it easier instead of running down the entire schedule. Four games that I look at make or break. Everything else is a win in my mind. At Texas, at Oklahoma State, and then home against West Virginia and home against Oklahoma. Those are the four that I look at, and those are the ones that are make or break. It could be a win, could be a loss, because. The thing that's better for Kansas State this year, the only losses they had were West Virginia, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. Yeah, you get the Cowboys on the road this year, but the Sooners and the Mountaineers, they got to come play you this year. You get to play them at home. Texas I'm throwing in there because they're going to be a different team with Tom Herman. So it's that wild card of, like, what are we going to see from Texas? Another positive thing, they don't have to play Stanford. They opened the year against Stanford last year. They lose 36-13. to They don't have a game like that. I mean, Vanderbilt is their Power 5 team, but Vanderbilt on the road is nowhere near 
playing Stanford. It was that a neutral site game? No, that was on the road at Stanford. So going to Vanderbilt is a lot easier than going to Stanford to play a game. I still look at this team, though, and at the very worst, four losses like they were last year. Four losses, five if they lose their bowl game. That is like the panic button, oh no, everything went wrong for this team, barring any huge injuries to key players. But at the best, this team could be Big 12 champions. At the best, if the planets align and everything falls in line for the Thundercats. No, I think I think you're right, and I think that they also are thinking a Big 12 championship, mm-hmm. uh, at least a, a trip to the game. I, I think that that's that's a that's an opportunity and a realistic uh, possibility for for that to happen. I wouldn't see this team being any worse than nine wins, though. Mm-hmm. I don't see this team being any worse than nine wins, basically on what you just had yeah. discussed. But it's what we kind of said throughout the podcast on, uh, about K State mm-hmm. that's going to either get them there or hold them back, and and that's being able to do more than just run the football. As good mm-hmm. as that is, you need to be able to with your quarterback move the ball down the field through the air. And so we don't get roasted in the comment section. I know why you said it, because we're so used to saying they have, um, oh, get get to the top and you'll have a chance to win it. This is the one division. All you got to do is win the regular season. You don't even have to play a title game. They don't have the title game this year for the Big 12. I think they're bringing it back, but this year should be just like last year, right? You're at the top and you win it. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I guess I, mean, I, this I get is, so used this, to saying. This is the one where, like, then that's the thing with the Big 12. This is me going off on a tangent here. They need to bring that game back, and I think everyone can agree with me. Bring a championship game back because I hate how they're a conference to where it's like, well, win the regular season, and you win your conference. While everyone else, Alabama, Ohio State, Penn State, um, I, I, almost USC. Said, I almost said Oregon. I'm living in the past here. The Trojans, Washington, they all have to play a game, and if they lose that game, well, whoops, we don't make the playoffs because we lost that last game. Just look at the Penn State Nittany Lions. But any last thoughts that you think we need to hit on K-State before we move on into the Mountaineers? Well, this is where you guys come in. Let us know down below what do you guys think could, the big question here, could the Thundercats or the Wildcats, whatever you want to call them, Could they dethrone Oklahoma? Could they be the Big 12 champions at the end of this year? I want you guys to let me know down below in the comment section. 